and I'm joined now by uh, Simon Hills. He's executive director of the Prudential Capital and Risk Team at the British Bankers Association. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Um, just taking a look at this report, yes. it does seem to be calling uh, for those new stress tests to really be a lot more stringent. I mean, the ones in the summer have mm. just proved not really to be worth it. Yeah, I think there's good news in the Bank of England's report. Good. It says that uh, the contagion hasn't spread to mm. major EU banks. That's been limited. And that British banks in particular have improved their capital and liquidity positions over mm. the past 12 months. But I think it's also reminding us not to be complacent. Mm. You know, it's asking banks to think the unthinkable or at least the unpalatable and ask themselves whether those scenarios that they use for their stress testing are tough enough. And of course we've got SEBS asking us to do stress tests in February, March, mm. April, May of, uh, of next year and that's important and they're going to for the first time include the stress testing of liquidity positions and I think that is crucial because so many times we've learned over my working life anyway that bank crises happen not because of a lack of access to capital but because of a lack of, lack of access mm. to liquidity. Indeed and when we look at what happened in Ireland uh, they really do need to feel quite different from the last ones to, to gain that credibility not even in the banking sector but also in the wider population. Yes, I think transparency is important, but of course it's got to be carefully handled. You know, as these stress tests are set up, I wouldn't want to be the person designing, you know, what haircut are we going to take on sovereign bond X or uh, country wise, uh, wise debt. Mm. Now, what they seem to be saying really is that that the UK banks do not have a great deal of exposure to some of the most concerning peripheral mm. countries, mm. but that they do have exposure to, to France and to Germany, and they in turn have got some have, have got quite a yeah. deal of exposure. So really, a, no, no complacency. No, I think we've got to get into those second order effects. You mm -hmm. know, I lend to a French bank. A French bank might be lending to. Uh, a, 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 country and other parts of Europe, what's the mm -hmm. impact on that? Mm -hmm. um, now, they also mentioned some overheating in emerging markets as mm. a potential concern because mm. uh, British banks obviously keen to lend in those markets yeah. and become involved, yeah. but uh, obviously they are looking, after what happened in the credit crisis here, they're mm. looking at some of these mm. asset bubbles. Well, I think banks in the UK keen to lend to the UK, but other investors may be wanting to invest in uh, other parts of the world, emerging markets. And what does that do for mm. banks' ability to attract capital and liquidity here mm. in the UK? Mm. Now, they also mention uh, quite clearly that the, there should be a country by country solution to mm. the European debt crisis. Rather, that it should rather it should be a comprehensive solution rather than a country by country solution. Yeah. Now, does that seem to be going against what was decided yesterday in Brussels under Angela Merkel? Yeah. Well, I, I think that we need a, a, a holistic approach to these sorts of problems. And we were talking earlier on, weren't we, about uh, the need to perhaps to haircut bondholders? Mm. You know, it's a discussion that's just kicking off. Yes. I think there's merit in that. Uh, and we need to explore it, issuers, investors, buy and sell side alike, mm. come to a conclusion along with the authorities about what role bail-ins can play. And do you think that we're going to have to revisit the idea that that would happen to, uh, before to 2013? I don't think I see it coming before 2013. Right. I think the banking system looks to me pretty resilient. These are longer term discussions, you know, bail-ins are not going to happen mm -hmm. overnight. We need to make sure they're properly designed and meet the regulatory objectives. Now, we also heard some new rules uh, from Basel III uh, yesterday on the bank's capital mm -hmm. requirements. For the most of the UK banks, uh, they are in pretty good shape for this, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, we in the UK have increased our capital and liquidity positions over mm -hmm. the past a couple of years with mm -hmm. some cajoling from the FSA, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we're reasonably well set up. But of course the British Bankers Association, which I represent, has 230 members in 60 different countries. We want to make sure we get this globally right. Mm -hmm. And for me, getting this globally right means a consistent implementation of the Basel III rules to a common time frame around the world. Okay, Simon Hills, thank you very much indeed Cheers. for Good joining us.